So power laws can arise at the critical point of phase transitions. And this is exciting and fun and interesting, but there's even more that's even more exciting and fun and interesting. So first, um, before I explain this, let me mention that the phase transitions I'm describing here are those that are known as continuous phase transitions, where um, a quantity goes from zero and then assumes a positive value without there being any jumps. Um, so it turns out that water freezing is not a phase transition like this, but there are many other um, uh, transitions that are continuous and do have these nice properties that I'm about to describe. So um, we see power laws at the critical point, the transition point in phase transitions. And it turns out that those exponents are universal. And this, uni this um, word universal is, is used in a technical sense by physicists to mean the following. So it doesn't mean that they're all always the same, but it does mean that the exponents sort themselves out into what are called universality classes. And what that means uh, is the following. So suppose um, I, all right, so here's a basic percolation model, a color each square with probability p. Um, but maybe I do a different type of lattice. Maybe I do a hexagonal lattice instead of a square one. Is that going to change everything? Well, it will change what the critical probability is. It will be higher or lower depending on the, the shape of the lattice. But it won't change the exponents that one would get from doing something like this. So um, these exponents for phase transitions are the same um, for broad classes of models independent of the details of the model. So let me write this statement um, a little bit more um, precisely. So, so saying this a little more precisely, exponents are the same. These ex power law exponents are the same for all models and phenomena. So it's, this isn't just mathematical results, but there are physical systems that do this as well that are in the same universality class. So what do I mean by universality class? Well, a universality class is determined by the system's dimension and the symmetry of the order parameter. So dimension, is it a one, two, three, or four dimensional system? Dimension in the traditional sense. And then symmetry of the order parameter is a more technical idea, but the order parameter means um, the thing that we're tracking that indicates whether or not a phase transition has occurred. So for percolation, it might be the probability that we have a spanning cluster. And the symmetry of this would, would be simply that it's a um, basically a scalar, a single number. Some other systems can have more complicated order parameters. So um, as an example, um, a, a common physical example for this is the transition between a magnet and a paramagnet. Sorry, there's a car outside of my window that um, evidently needs a belt changed. That sounds awful, sorry. Um, so uh, a magnet can um, uh, go undergo a transition from being a magnet to being a paramagnet. And um, there are many, many physical materials that undergo this transition. And they're all going to undergo a transition at a different temperature. But um, the exponents that describe that transition will all be the same. All right. So um, all this is to say that phase transitions can produce exponents. But um, in this setting, the exponents have this um, are extra interesting because they're universal. Um, that they capture something about um, the nature of a transition in a very disparate systems. So all sorts of physical materials, any physical material that undergoes um, a magnet, paramagnet transmission, transition that's three-dimensional is going to have the same, the same exponents. So to physicists, um, these are very, very interesting properties. And they show that there's some sort of deep similarity among apparently different systems. Um, and moreover, there's um, some very nice theory that explains why this similarity occurs. It's known as the renormalization group. 
um, that says that there's some details of these models at the transition point that don't matter and there's some that do. And it turns out that there are only a few that do, which is why there are only a few universality classes.